One of the last things we are going to touch in this chapter about bindings is the famous result bindings. Now, result bindings is that particular method, or I don't want to call it workaround, but it, because it does work with limits, to go back and really connect two different data sets on a different grain, on a field that's not common um, to those two data sets. And what I'm talking about here, if we go back to this dashboard, previously we said for the connect data sources, it works fine. When we connected industry here to industry here, these work together. When we connect uh, opportunity name, they work together. So we could connect everything coming from the higher level, from opportunity all the way down to the product data set, and they work fine. Again, these two widgets are based on two data sets. They're different. This is in the connect data source uh, and the dashboard design chapter. However, I said the only case we cannot solve through connect data sources is when we want to click on product family accessories and update the rest of the charts. We said product family is not common. Opportunity is higher than product. Uh, I have opportunity name here and I have opportunity name here because product is lower. But product family is lower than opportunity. Product family will not be here. That's why I suggested this dashboard is about opportunities. Everything about opportunities works perfectly. Once you hit products and you want to know about an accessory, that sounds like you want to know about a product. That sounds to as a link to go to products dashboard. Now, you could solve it through a result binding. And binding, essentially, what we're going to do is create a hidden step that is listening to product family. So product fa family uh, is grouped by product family. But one of the fields that are that is common between these two data sets is product uh, opportunity name. So if I had a hidden step in the product family, listening to products, so I hit the accessories, this hidden step updates to only opportunities about accessories. And then these steps understand opportunity name, and we can bind the filter of this industry to the opportunity name. So it, it is as if they are dynamically interacting together. Now, the only catch here is results, results binding, result queries work up to 10,000 rows and they cut down. What this means, if I click on accessories and this hidden step has 10,000 rows or less, everything works fine. If it's above 10,000, it will not work. So you have to uh, you know, take note. Uh, in my opinion, this is probably the lesser number of use cases and most use cases when you're connecting these things, you're not passing more than 10,000 values. So again, if you click on accessories and it update the hidden step, that hidden step cannot have more than 10,000 uh, 10, rows. Just keep that in mind as you implement this solution. All right, so we are going to create step, again, based on products opportunities, same, same one, and call this um, result step. And we want to group on something common, in this case, opportunity name. I don't care about the metric in this case, just the opportunity name, opportunity name I needed. Opportunity name is written as this, opportunity.name. So hit this. It's right here sitting result underscore step underscore one. And opportunity.name. So if I go to, the, to this step, industry, for example, and again, just to show you that does not work, 353 does not update industry. I need to go to this step called industry, or specifically called amount by industry underscore one, and update the filter to listen to the hidden step result from here. So control E, control find amount by industry. This is the step. As I scroll down, there's no filter. Now I can uh, start the filter from scratch, or if you like, we can actually go back to can cancel this. Go back to this step, it's uh, multiple layout, no problem, and go to add a filter just as placeholder. We will change this and even use opportunity name, so lesser change. Select any value, and if you click OK here, so this is the filter right now that's been stuck here. Now if I go to Command E, Control Find Amount by Industry, you're going to see the filter section here. Now, 
just follow along. I don't want you to save this yet. So please just copy the filters. You can copy the filter section. All of this. Notice it's, again, you can collapse it or we can copy it from here. Just copy filters, name, copy all of this. Control copy. Hit cancel. And what I was going to ask you is just to take out that filter. So let's go back. Continue. Take out that filter. And hit update. Just because I have multiple pages, I just want to make sure, uh, or uh, again, because previously um, designed, I want to make sure I'm not, or at least I'm not uh, updating in one place and leaving another place. So now, if I preview this, should be fine again. But this way, it's not working from 353 up to there. So again, I just copied that. Now that I've copied it, Control E, go back to that amount by industry. Amount by industry right here, Control plus. Okay, and lost it right here. And you can add it right here. So comma and add that selection. And if you wanted to type it again, this was just a long route, but you could type filters, comma, square brackets, name, and essentially this is what we want. What we are going to do from the binding exercises, just take this out, take the square bracket of the value and in. Take out these one, two, three, four lines, because we are going to put the new binding right here, something in a binding syntax. Now, if you recall, or you can again take a look at the slides, it's a column. And this is something uh, we called it result step underscore one. So this is column from result step underscore one dot result because it's just in listen mode, comma. This is where the column escape. It's called opportunity dot name this is the field inside the step there's this field we're listening to it and it should be dot as object if not, I'm not mistaken I'll check it in a bit so again column of the step we are listening to dot result comma escape code opportunity name dot as object and that's how I construct the filter the filter of industry step is binded to the common or to the hidden step coming from the product family or the product data set passing opportunity name. I forgot a single double quote here and a double quote right here. So name is in the industry. Opportunity.name is coming from this step. If I search for it, control copy, control V, find it. It's right here with that field listed under it right here. So now ready to test, hit done, go to preview. Scroll all the way down, and we hit an error. Let me just really check it really quick. We have filters, name, I got column, result step underscore one, dot result, comma, escape opportunity dot name, dot as object. So I'm going to double check the name. That's result step underscore one. And I'm going to check opportunity name. Opportunity name is there. Up. And filters name, column, result step. And just want to make sure I did not here. And here, this is closed. done okay so obviously it's just an error in the syntax so one more time it's where it helps having an extra pair of eyes so as object and I have escape code opportunity dot name escape double code ah there's the parenthesis right here. So again, this is where I said it's always good to copy. If you have the slides or if you have uh, a working binding, I should have copied it from the other dashboard. 
one of these simple misses. So I just missed the bracket right here while I was typing this manually. Now if I had done, this should, as I scroll down, there you go. So remember, all what I wanted is when I click on accessories, this should update. There you go. These are the industries only with accessories. These are the industries only with phones. And this is for tablets and so on. Now, I added the result filter to this industry step. I will have to add it to this one. I will have to add it to this one and so on. And that's why the result binding, you will have to manually add the interaction to each one of these widgets or uh, steps. Keep in mind, please, when I clicked on digital media, it will update this hidden step with the number uh, or with the opportunities right here. So these cannot be more than 10,000. And another, another tip is you don't want to use a lot of results binding because then, again, you're affecting the performance of the dashboard. So just keep that in mind. The filter is fine. It's one result step, but not many, many result steps uh, on the dashboard. One last tip on so-called step binding. So you saw the example where we were um, dynamically reading, for example, the name and the country from whoever is logged in. When you want to pass from the so-called, for example, uh, and show that in a text, for example, hello, whoever is you know, logged in, you can use something like cell from that so-called step result because it's just, there's no click on it. This is so called just executes and again similarly you are reading the name. So you can use this example if you want a dynamic message on top of the dashboard. Since we are talking about bindings we just need to remember also the date filters. So date filters are a little bit more complex but if you recall uh, one of the common use cases is to have the static uh, toggles or the toggles on top of the dashboard where you select the date parts so with the, check the date widget. The date widget now has a lot of date parts can be used. But if you need this kind of uh, format or design on the dashboard, remember from the data prep or the recipes exercise or chapter create, that creating these date parts at the data layer will be much more easier than creating static steps and binding them to the uh, uh, charts or widgets or steps of those uh, widgets and charts. So always remember, if you need date parts, it's better or it's recommended to create the date parts at the data layer level, whether you can do it in the recipe or using compute expressions and you can create those. Even if you had some conditions, combinations of conditions or buckets, again, you can create them in compute expressions and add them as is fields to the uh, data set. You can revise the data prep or recipes uh, chapter and you can see how we did that there. So for the date filters, again, just remember, you can uh, create uh, connections on the date themselves, so connect data sources on uh, dates. For date parts, there's a little bit of a tip here. So for example, if you remember this dashboard, we connected this data set opportunities to product. So when we select a certain date, um, let's say previous year, and say, uh, again, just let me zoom out a little bit and say update. If you scroll down, this will update from 350 to 244. So it works. However, let me refresh this. And again, I'm going to save this from the previous work. But if you click on this, which is actually 2018.04, it's a date part, and click on it, it does not update the lower chart because we connected on the date itself, not date part. So one way to make this happen is, again, you can click on, double click on this to know what is the date. Look how dates are treated. They're treated specifically in this format. And what I have here is actually close date year, close date month. This, this is actual field being, uh, the, the, the step is considering or is emitting. So close date, underscore year, uh, three tildes, close date, underscore month. I'm going to copy this. And if I look at this right here, this will have another uh, date parts right here if, if it was grouped by date. But what I can do is, because I already connected on the close date itself, just again to speed things up, 
Um, remember, I can go Command E. I can look for connections right there. So these are my connections. So I have one on industry. I have one on opportunity name, and I have one on close date. That's for the date picker. Now I can modify this directly or what I should actually do. Hold on one second. Yep, so if I go back to connections, what I wanna do is create a new connection or again, we can modify this. Let's modify this actually directly and then remember if you wanted to have the date picker to interact with two, with both data sets and the bar chart or this uh, group by year month, you will have to create both connections or copy paste the whole connection and modify it. But what I'm going to do is just change the fields that are being connected. So this is the first one from the opportunity. I'm just going to paste the field I copied because this is the field being emitted by the chart. And this field and the other data set would look like something underscore year and then three tildes, this whole thing, control copy to underscore month. Now again, like I said, I would have copied this whole thing, modified that one separately, but for brevity, I'm doing it directly here. Now that I connected the date parts on each other, to each other, I can hit done. And now if I check those charts, you are going to notice, if I click on this, it will update here. And that's how you connect date parts. If it was only group by year, you do it by year, by year month, by year quarter, you do it in a similar fashion. I'm gonna hit save. Go back to the slides. Another thing you can directly in the JSON in if it's needed. I mean, this probably is very rare, but if you need to mix the date parts, so in the UI, you can only select year to year, uh, quarter from to ago, uh, ahead but if you want to mix years and days years and quarters you can actually create them year and year and go back control e in the json type exactly what you want directly it will it will take it for date filters with sackle uh, remember this is how they are generated again there's that tilde function that's that tilde function being uh, generated for, for the date parts if you ever have the requirement to display the date on a text widget this is pretty much how your binding will look like. Cell of wherever you're reading it. Result, again, you're just reading it. And you want to display the whole tilde. That's the field. And as string, for example. For date bindings, again, notoriously, um, this is if you did not create the buckets. If you did not create the derived fields, the date parts in the recipe or at the data set level, this is how you might approach it by creating a static step that emits the values and then you have to bind them, uh, in this case to a cycle, for example, through a date range. This is where you will use a syntax that's similar to as date range from what date to what date. And you're passing the values right here. For more on this, I would like to direct you to salesforceblogger.com. So Rekha or AKA Ricky Hofgard, um, she's a, on the Einstein Analytics team, and she has an extensive blog where she covers a lot of bindings plus many other topics. Um, highly encourage you to just go check it out if you do need some of the steps printed out or walk, uh, a walk-by process to how to create more than what we covered in this chapter. And that's it for binding for this series.